Welcome Classic Rock fans to another episode of Classic Song Review where classic tracks are excavated and explored. And today I'd like to think about Bing Crosby and White Christmas. My father was a huge fan of Bing Crosby, uh, felt that he was the pinnacle of vocal achievement. Uh, and as much as I like Bing Crosby myself, I'm not sure I would uh, go that far. I would say that, that though that um, he certainly had an, uh, an appeal and a way of connecting with people, a very casual, sort of easy manner. His voice was also... Um, uh, he was quite avuncular in many respects and his voice was very warming and embracing like a large duvet and this was no doubt a large part of his appeal it was in 1948 that he was actually voted america as the most admired man alive suddenly his rise to fame coincided with developments in microphone technology before bing crosby singers would uh, would have had to have belted songs out so they could be heard at the back of sort of auditoriums and halls very much in sort of al jolson style certainly developments in microphone technology meant that singers um could be more conversational in style more natural more nuance this new style of singing became known as crooning now crooning was denounced by a lot of sort of traditionalists who didn't see it as proper singing. It was often described as uh, defiling what singing should be. It was often even described as bass in, in many respects. You could imagine the, the, the same ire thrown at Johnny Rotten in the sort of late 70s for his specific brand of unsinging. So crooner was seen as a pejorative by many, but it did allow many singers to shift from tenor to baritone as there was um, no longer such an emphasis on power and projection and much more sort of renewed interest in uh, vocal phrasing. So the song White Christmas was written by Irvin Berlin. Many seen it as quite ironic that uh, a song celebrating Christmas should be written by a, a Russian immigrant Jew who didn't actually celebrate Christmas. There is a tragedy to this story though. Apparently uh, Irvin Berlin lost his uh, three month old son who died on Christmas Day in 1928. And he and his wife would visit the grave every Christmas. Maybe that attributes, maybe that in many ways comes across in the song as that sort of sense of longing, that wistful sort of sense of longing and melancholy that's sort of communicated. Nevertheless, the song certainly had appeal. Uh, they estimate that Crosby's version has sold in excess of something like 50 million copies, 100 million copies if we take in, into account other people's versions of it. Certainly the song was recorded several times, really. The original was broadcast from the Kraft Music Hall, I think, radio show. Uh, that was 1941, Christmas Day 1941. That version is now lost, so you would have actually had to have been around in the 1940s to actually hear the original White Christmas. Uh, the re-recorded version in 1942, which coincided with the Holiday Inn soundtrack, uh, was played to death. It was overplayed and uh, ultimately became damaged. I think that's been fully restored now, so you can actually hear that version. The version actually that we know um, well that was played most was the one that was recorded, recorded in 1947. They tried to recreate the original, of course. They got in the, if I may refer to my notes, the, the Trotter Orchestra and the Derby Singers once more to try and reproduce the, the atmosphere of the original recording. There were certainly two stories as to the conception of this song. I say Irvin Berlin wrote the song in California. That's one version of the event. And that, in many ways, uh, explains the missing verse. There was actually a, uh, a verse at the beginning of the song that Crosby never sung. And, that, and it went something like, The sun is shining, the grass is green, orange and palm trees sway. There's never been such a day in Beverly Hills, LA, but it's December the 24th and I'm longing to be up north. Certainly another version of where Irvin Berlin wrote the song was on the set of Top Hat in 1935. Apparently Fred Astaire really liked the song, uh, but quite a few people passed on it. Certainly the song was used uh, very successfully in the film Holiday Inn from 1942, a film that's also starred Fred Astaire, of course. Uh, the film tells the story of a performer who wants to give up show business and open an inn somewhere out in the sticks and just perform on sort of uh, selected holidays. Of course, the uh, Christmas section comes up a couple of times in the film. The first time Bing Crosby sits at the piano and sings the song beautifully, which is the best version, in my opinion. By his side is the beautiful Marjorie Reynolds. Of course, later on in the film, Marjorie Reynolds uh, actually sings the song, or she pretends to sing the song. Her, her voice was actually dubbed, her singing voice was dubbed in the film by, uh, by Martha Mears. It's certainly a beautiful and iconic scene with crystallised asbestos used to uh, represent snow. Obviously, health and safety was in full vigour back then. 
the song Like Christmas had uh, an appeal, a nostalgic appeal, even when it came out. I think for a, a country that was reeling at the time from the recent Pearl Harbor attacks. But also Crosby, would, as I said, would go abroad and, and, and sing it for troops. And he would often feel very uncomfortable about singing such a sad, melancholic song. Uh, he, he felt that really the, the point of the shows would be to lift spirits. But the, such was the, um, the song was requested with such vigour, he had no, uh, n sort of no choice but to perform it. Also in 1944, he was at a USO show with Bob Hope and the Andrews Sisters. Uh, he performed the song, of course, to a lot of those soldiers who would then go on to be killed in the Battle of the Bulge. It was certainly a song that sort of went on to define Crosby's career in many respects, although he was quite disparaging about it in many respects. He often felt that vocally uh, it didn't require much. He said a jackdaw with a cleft palate could sing this song effectively. Such was the popularity of the song, of course. They uh, made a film in 1954 called White Christmas, the first film to ma be made in Vista Vision, which was kind of an early version of widescreen. The film starred Rosemary Clooney, Danny Kaye and Vera Ellen, of course. Uh, Vera Ellen didn't sing in the song as well. She just mimed as she, um, she couldn't sing. Uh, Danny Kaye, of course, was brought in at the last minute. It was supposed to, I think the job was offered to Fred Astaire, who was unable to do it due to other commitments, and then Donald O'Connor from Singing in the Rain, who wasn't able to do it due to ill health, apparently. But anyway, Danny Kaye was a, a wonderful sort of replacement. Of course, the film ends with a very sort of sweeping sort of panoramic uh, version of the song with the Christmas tree and the children and the audience and, the, you know, the barn is opened up to reveal, you know, all the snow. As nice as it is and as, you know, cinematic as that is, I much prefer the, the more intimate uh, phrasing of the, the version that's in A Holiday Inn, uh, which he performs uh, sat next to the beautiful Marjorie Reynolds. Uh, I never get tired of looking at her. Interesting, uh, in, an interesting aside is Marjorie Reynolds died in 1997, aged 79. Certainly what makes the, the song popular is it, its sort of melancholic refrain, its sense of longing for bygone days. It has kind of a wistful quality to it. Um, the idea, you know, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, this idea of longing and reminiscing, where treetops glisten and children listen to sleigh bells in the snow. It's a song that plucks at the heartstrings at a time when we uh, generally sort of require that, I think. And it was certainly one that struck a, a massive accord of the uh, American audiences at a time when you know, the world was very much at war. We needed something that was, um, was comforting and reassuring. Anyway, that's my take on Bing Crosby's White Christmas, an iconic song for this time of year. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please click like and subscribe, but more importantly, please do keep listening.